So when is there a practical application for using this pass by reference? And well, here's a good one. Uh, when we think about something like shuffling, maybe a deck of cards or some random numbers. Uh, say for example, again, I, I built out some code where uh, if we look at this, I basically am saying uh, create a new array of 100 uh, integers and just set them equal to one to 100. Okay, one to 100. Right now they're in order. But let's jumble them up. Let's just put them all over the place. Well, what we can do is again, because we're uh, using pass by a reference, if I say shuffle nums, what happens is that memory address gets passed to shuffle and becomes list. And any direct manipulation I do to the elements is going to be persistent. So even though that this is a void data type, even though it has no return, any changes I make to the array are going to be persistent. So even though right now it is one to a hundred in order, as soon as I run through this, you're going to see that they no longer are. And if I run through it again, not compile it again, but run through it again and run through it again, I get a random set of numbers. I get a random order each and every time. So one way you can think about it again is maybe this is like a deck of cards. Instead of it being a uh, hundred, I'm playing 52. And instead of shuffling around, you know, a uh, card objects, uh, because those, those are complex, I can shuffle around my kind of indices. And now again, this is a way for me to sort of have a uh, uh, a way to persistently know, even though I'm randomly generating a number, what's the next randomly generated number? What was the previously generated number? So I can go back and forth between my numbers. So if, say for example, instead of it being a deck of cards, I'm thinking uh, a playlist, a music player, for example. I've got it on shuffle, but I really liked the song I was just listening to. So I wanna go back. Well, random, uh, you would figure that I can't do that. Well, luckily, you know, with this version, let me actually clear this out and run it again. With this version right here, if I really liked uh, track three and I moved to track 36, oh, but I really liked track three. So I, I want to go back and I want to hear it again. Well, guess what? I can do that now that I have this kind of shuffled array. And again, I can use this shuffled array right here to do that. Now, what am I doing? Each element, I'm going through each element, and just like with a linear search, instead of me comparing if my linear search, just to even kind of put that on the screen, in my linear search, I had an index, and I would take my element at that index and compare it to a key. Instead of doing that, uh, what I'm doing is I'm saying create a random index, and then whatever's in my current in my current uh, i, my current index, take these two numbers and swap them. That's it. So I'm going through and literally instead of uh, this three, we can think of it in the sense of I randomly generated a number. So I randomly generated the index uh, three, why not? So I go, all right, well, where's three? This is zero, one, two, three. Okay, well, this guy, and this guy, just so we can see the code for a second, I say make randint. I've made the randomly generated three. That's a terrible three, but that. I'm going to store temp, well, list i. I'm going to store that in temp. So temp now is going to equal six. It's hanging out there because then I say right here, list at i is now going to equal list at random int. So this suddenly is no longer 6, it is now i or 9. It is now 9. Okay, well, that last little bit was list at random randomly generated index is now equal to temp. Again, temp is 6, so guess what 9 magically becomes 6. That entire process gets repeated over and over again. So even though I just did it here with this element, I only did it once. I do it again here, 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 
and here until they're all completely shuffled. And that's what I get when I run through this.